Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Ishan Russell and tonight our focus is on what newspaper reports suggest is the government's plan to create a regulatory body for journalism in media institutes. With media courses and colleges mushrooming across the country, there's an undeniable need to check whether students are being imparted quality education. But does this in any way impinge upon the independence of the media or the autonomy of universities? Those are the questions that we'll be exploring with eminent journalist and senior fellow at Shiv Nadar University, Siddharth Vardarajan and also veteran journalist and political editor at the Hindustan Times, uh, Vinod Sharma joins us. And to help us understand what the government is really thinking, we are joined by Nalin Kohli, national spokesperson of the BJP. And Nalin is, of course, somebody who's also spent a lot of time in the media. So, Nalin, I'll start with you. I mean, just for uh, the help of our viewers, what is the government thinking on this uh, domain? I think it's for the government to finally announce the details. Hmm. In, within the government, and any government, the government of the day, will certainly look at various things. They may be discussed. Necessarily, they may not even become decisions or policies. Mm. But the, in continuation, this has, been, this has come up in the past too, in the last year or two, I've seen it in the media. Let's look at it beyond a political situation. Any kind of educational institution must do justice to whatever education they are imparting. Right. And there are various regulatory mechanisms to try to put in basic minimum standards. Going beyond the standards is what they would do on their own. But the government could step in only with basics. Now, in journalism particularly, we've had a history of mass communication more than journalism teaching, hmm. which goes through this 1967 after the Ford Foundation stepped in, etc. And over the years, with the explosion of the media in the 90s, suddenly a lot of them mushroomed, not necessarily, maybe with the standards that may be there. Now, there are some excellent institutions and there is talk of some of them not doing so well. So perhaps when you're looking at other things, engineering, management, medical, everywhere, can there be something to ensure that there's a basic standard mm. on this? But that has nothing to do with the functioning of the media. Right. The functioning of the media is an independent uh, institution as it's envisaged. And we have to remove that from the educational imparting process. All right, Siddharth. And uh, as far as these institutes are concerned, I mean, they've mushroomed literally all over the country. I mean, uh, ever since the advent of perhaps television journalism, uh, it's become a sort of a glamour industry. Is there a real fear that uh, as far as education is concerned, uh, that really needs to be controlled or the curricula needs to be decided and perhaps the central government needs to step in? Well, there's two issues here. One is the emergence of education, particularly in a sought-after field like journalism, mm. as a business. Uh, and as a business where many of the companies that are, or many of the practitioners who are entering this field are doing so uh, in a fairly unethical manner. Yeah. Uh, so yes, journalism pedagogy has mushroomed. Mm. You have some excellent institutions, excellent private institutions. For example, the Asian College of Journalism. Uh, with which, uh, when I was at the Hindu, we had, a, you know, it's associated yeah, with right. the Hindu. It's a very reputed organization. No, nobody can question the kind of education it imparts. Right. Similarly, Manipal, lots of institutions that have done well. But then you have a lot of fly-by-night places. Mm. And I know because you know, one would receive applications as an editor of one of these papers. You'll get applications from students here and there, hoping to intern, hoping to, uh, to get a job. And when occasionally one, one would meet some of these uh, individuals and you got a sense of what they were being taught. Obviously... Uh, it wasn't really up to the mark. So there is a problem with journalism education, just as I believe there is a problem with the mushrooming of engineering institutes, medical institutions, right. uh, law colleges. Mm. I would say why, f why focus only on higher education, mm. uh, the kind of private schools that offer so-called English medium education right. in small towns and kaspas of India, mm. the kind of education that happens. So there is a problem when education becomes a business. Right. Having said that, the, the, the danger is in associating many of the ills or problems of journalism today that we mm. see. And mm. anybody in Rajya Sabha TV who saw the discussion that Girish yes. uh, Nigam conducted with Rajdeep Sabanakvi, uh, 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 myself and um, I think it was uh, Nihal Singh sir, yeah. uh, would have you know, understood the kind of problems that the industry faces. Mm. Lack of education or lack of qualifications of journalists is the least of the problems. Right. Uh, because a lot of the, you know, any, any good institution will train its journalists on the job. It sets, uh, you know, the, the editorial direction or the, you know, the overall culture of an organization sets the tone and tenor of the kind of journalism it practices. Right. So, uh, while yes, there is a problem with journalism education, uh, I don't think this is uh, the biggest problem that confronts, you know, so you could deal with it as a problem of education in general. Right. But, all right. But, 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 I just, the, but you know, it's, it, where I'm a little bit wary is because even with the previous government, mm -hmm. 
Let's trace the origin of this whole discussion. Yes, because that is what I wanted to get yeah. Vinod Sharma. So, so 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 without preempting what he will say, the mm. origin of this discussion mm. is government being unhappy with the way media covers its activities. So the, the, the feeling is that you, know, you guys are doing a bad job. Why are you doing a bad job? Well, you're doing a bad job because your journalists are biased against us. Mm. So how do we teach them to be balanced, to give them better journalism education, have, make them do exams? So, so the, the mindset which is generating this urge to regulate or to set standards, I'm afraid is not a very good one. Right. Uh, and, but I'm saying that having conceded that there is a problem hmm. with the media and with journalism, with journalism education that needs to be addressed. Then Vinoji, comment, then I'll come in later. Yeah, uh, Vinoji, as far as uh, what Siddharth was mentioning, the fact is that, you know, there often is a lot of pride associated with journalists saying that I had no formal training, but I got into this and I have reached the zenith of journalism. And there's so many examples over the years. So in terms of just education or controlling that, is it really necessary? And does it impinge upon the autonomy of the universities also in any way? You know, uh, of course, there is a problem because uh, there are far too many people uh, pretending to be uh, training journalists uh, for a good career in the profession. And there is a problem. These are teaching shops and they have to be sorted out. Mm. The question is, how do they have to be sorted out? Right. Uh, I'm a bit worried that the government seems uh, a little uh, interested in getting into this whole business of journalism teaching. Mm -hmm at a time when it is in inviting foreign institutions to come and set up campuses here, uh, you know, set up universities, get into tie-ups, you know. And if they were really so interested, then I think that one area where which they, which they can explore and which would be beyond any controversy is that invite some of the best international institutions of journalism to yeah. set up shop here. One. Two, if the government is not wanting to do that because... Journalism, you know, investment in newspaper industry, foreign capital, foreign direct investment, there has been some controversy over that, that whether this will, foreign capital come to influence debate right. and public discourse in this mm -hmm. country. So I may suggest that like the newspapers jointly own mm. the wire services in this country, mm. why can't they come together, the newspapers themselves, to set up institutions, for instance, Times of India has a very... But almost well, every media house now has... No, they, have, they have their own training programs. Mm. And thirdly, I would like to say, while you can teach the technical aspect of journalism, you cannot teach writing. Yes. And the best journalists who have made a mark have no, hold no degree in journalism. I mean, mm. until now I know many. I don't think Siddharth holds a degree in journalism. And they have come from the field of humanities. Mm. So my bigger worry is that when these, uh, you know, there's a university, tele, you know, there's a telecommunication, a te communication university they are yeah. thinking of. Now, is this communication university going to be some kind of a medical council of India, as has been reported? Mm. And we know what's the track record of medical council, council of India, that how they have been permitting, uh, you know, the, the medical uh, colleges to uh, increase the number of seats without due diligence in so far as their infrastructure was concerned, the teaching faculty was concerned. So it's an area which the government should desist entering Correct. and should allow the industry itself, the journalists themselves, to look for avenues to, for better training of future journalists in this country. All right, but that, that brings us back to the question of how do you weed out the good from the bad? And that is pe where perhaps intervention is required. Nalin, you wanted to come and I'll See, come I back. three, four answer. points to add because there are substantive points coming up mm. in this discussion. Let's go one by one. One of the global challenges is that communication, journalism or uh, is becoming almost a subset of the larger communication. Mm. A lot of media houses, pure magazines, newspapers are being owned by larger communication companies because there's also the pressure of revenue. And after right. all, uh, not, uh, news can not always be, if I may use it bluntly, a profitable thing because there's a social service, a public good involved. The second part to it is, um, yes, I think Vinoji has made an important point. The liberal arts whole program, which is so critical to a wider way of approaching the subject of journalism and the mission of journalism more than the subject, that itself is also being challenged and it's becoming very, very narrow. The third is, it's a fact. Some of the finest examples you have in journalists through the pre-independence era or even here, India or abroad, have not been people trained anywhere. Mm. It was also with the missionary zeal. On the other hand, as he used the word teaching shops, you have that risk where people go through a program which may not be necessarily good and then they come out claiming to be holding something that they probably don't have, they are not adding value to the profession. The last point which he says, I don't think anything will stop 
the media houses from coming together and possibly doing something like this, it will be to the interest of journalism. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's anything and it's a good suggestion. Why not? The media houses may work on it. For the government, there are two issues that we have to be clear about. Right. A, is it to set in the minimum standards? Because mm -hmm. there are communication courses that run through universities as also outside the university framework. And two, the, the government may decide that it may want to set up an institute, like you have an Indian Institute of Mass Communication across the country. You may have a school like this, but whether that would be able to, in a sense, as Siddharth was saying, having a concern, change, change the mindsets of journalism, not be adversarial. I think the four estates of uh, the pillars of democracy are designed in that way. After all, journalism or media will look at it with an adversarial way to try to keep a check on it. And whether it can influence, I don't think so. I think that would be too wide. I don't think any government can achieve that through a training program. All right, but uh, yeah, if I would just want, you see, the reason I, I am a little bit suspicious of the motives of politicians mm. when they talk about the need to standardize journalism education. And this is from the no, UP no, I'm not saying so this is to the NBA. Not BJP or anything. This goes back to the Congress and the UP. He's talking right? generally. Yeah. I mean, uh, Manish Tiwari, Kapil Sibal, all of these uh, gentlemen floated the idea of, of uh, you know, inadequacy of journalism courses and need mm. to have exams and regulations. The reason I'm suspicious of the motivation is that it's not as if it's coming out of a concern for teaching shops. After mm. all, in India, you have, you know, fly-by-night institutes that have sprung up promising young boys and girls that we'll teach you how to be air hostesses, mm. right? You have, uh, you have uh, fashion institutes that have come up. Any number of unregulated so factors that if you're not offering a degree, mm. but only offering some kind of a diploma, which, is, which, which may or may not be recognized by industry. Mm. So there is no regulation that you have to go through. Mm. So if it was concern only about young boys and girls getting hoodwinked by professional sounding courses in a variety of fields, I could understand, right? right. So then I would expect uh, the INB ministry or the education ministry to say, well, no, not INB, in fact, I would expect HRD to get into the act and yeah. say, whether it's media or fashion or, or catering or hotel management, there should be uh, some kind of regulation. But that's not what's happening, right? Mm. What's happening is there's a focusing on media. And I would connect this, you know, for example, the prime minister made his, when he spoke at this... Uh, function, uh, I think, Pudhari newspaper yes. in Maharashtra, right? So, uh, so, he, so he said uh, there should be samvad, mm. but there should not be alochana. Mm. So, uh, the, I, mean, I mean, there should not be allegations. He yeah. said that we need dialogue and not allegations. Not criticism. He also yeah, said he said criticism. there should be criticism, but not allegations. Right? Yeah, not oh. leveling allegations. Now, the, the, point is how, yeah, the point is, how can you have samvad, mm. which means dialogue, mm. when the prime minister doesn't take questions? Right, so I'm saying that when you have a culture which is in a way inimical to journalism, journalists doing their job, and when journalists are going to write articles critical of the government, mm. to label that as an allegation, because Mr. Modi said, so far I've been in power for seven months, we've not heard any uh, criticism, all we've heard is allegations, right? right? So in a way you're saying that everything that the Indian media has done for the past seven months is not journalism, right? So this is the political yeah. context in which this, de this debate leaves me a little bit worried. All right. I mean, <coughs> just as a quick comment, no, no. just a single sentence, that um, certainly from the media's expectation, it would be that you would have an open government to the extent that if it could be conducted in television studios, why not? Because it would be complete flow no, of information. That's, 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 but I think you're going. I don't, the, no, 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 I don't, that's why I'm taking it only in the same spirit as you are, Siddharth. That's why I said that would be the most desirable expectation. It's not going to be like that. But certainly, I think in terms of reactionary without sometimes checking facts. Mm. We have examples, sometimes by even prominent uh, people, because in the age of competitive uh, journalism also, mm. in trying to break the news, right. sometimes those lines and barriers are crossed. But that's a separate issue to, I think, the journalism education, education issue. And we shouldn't mix the two. All right. So, But what Siddharth was saying, that there's a larger context to the idea of being, uh, the idea being mooted again. And Vinod Sharma, to get you in on that, about the larger idea behind uh, this communications university, uh, Siddharth is a little cautious about it. What about you? I, it doesn't inspire me at all. I don't think government has any, has, should have anything to do with teaching journalism. Hmm. I think journalism is meant to teach governments. You know. So what we need to do hmm. is to create a human resource in hmm. this profession, hmm. which is of world-class quality, hmm. that newspapers, their owners, the Indian Newspaper Society, the Editors Guild of India, whatever professional bodies are there, you know, they should go around doing talent scouting and getting people into mm. this profession. And there used to be a time when this was a profession of discards. Mm. Like people who could not make the grade in other walks of life, yeah. uh, you know, uh, aspiring doctors, engineers, civil servants, yeah, no, civil <laughs> servants they used to join this profession. But it, this is no longer the case. Mm. 
you have some of the finest journalists uh, and with tremendous courage mm. who have the capacity to stand up and be counted in a minority of one mm. on a particular issue mm. they have come into this profession now the worry that i share with siddharth is that take the case mm. of the recent episode uh, uh, near Por- of porbandar yeah and the, uh, and, and couple of journalists raised some very <coughs> pertinent questions uh, based on thorough inquiries and it wasn't that something they they didn't go by hair say mm. but they pieced together an argument which showed a flip side now they were quickly branded as anti national mm. now may i say that you know uh, are we going to discourage uh, people who, who are willing to uh, make a point which is different from the chorus that is being sung journalism journalism is not a chorus mm. journalism is a cacophony it should be it 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 is it is a variety of thought that is a, on full play mm. and it should be respected i with i say with all respect to the coast guard who took out the ship nobody for a moment is saying that they did the wrong thing the only question is that what potential what lethal stuff was it carrying and is it okay for us to present a story right. which seems to be bordering on a bit of exaggeration mm. uh, a b look journalism is history written in a hurry mm. and when there is so much of controversy over hist- history the way it is written in this mm. country and this controversy has started uh, maybe the government has good reasons the the party that is in power has good reasons uh, to engage in a debate over the way history has been recorded mm. and they may have a good reason that it has been recorded to suit a, a particular name or a particular dynasty mm. but i personally feel that two three things this whole dispute over history the uh, move to set up a com- communication university and then the renewed emphasis on the official secret act no these are the straws in the wind mm. that create a picture that puts me into a degree of distress all right because i think that a government requires a free media because a free media does indeed help the government and government should not though we have to be adversarial towards the government the government should not be adversarial towards us in fact in fact i remember at the height of 2002 the i i interviewed the prime minister of the day mm. and he gave me an interview and he said vinod ji i have given you an interview is bawajood iske ki main janta hu ki aap meri party ki vichardhara ke khilaf hai to i said uh, narendra bhai aap ye sneh banaye rakhe hain loktantra si ka naam hai to main ye samajhta hu ki you know we have to that we must encourage free and fearless journalism but at the same time informed and well researched journalism it should not be an assembly of quasi literate right. uh, which will encourage people like markande kardu to set a basic qualification for becoming a journalist and they can't be i think factory production also yeah. i mean sadat uh, coming to you as far as uh, with various uh, organizations go the press council of india in association with makhan lal university i mean they sat and they debated this topic for some time and amongst the, the research that they came out with was that abroad i mean this is a trend in the uk you have the national council for the training of journalists there is a similar council in the us so i mean uh, is this that bad an idea so i'm not aware of uh, a, a national body in the united states mm. uh, training journalists you have lots of journalism schools whose whose uh, mm. curricula are not vetted by any government body mm. or any outside agency columbia school of journalism for example i've taught at berkeley yeah. uh, nobody vetted my course okay uh and that's the way it should be mm. right uh, so the point is that you have to have con- you have you should set up robust universities that mm. are autonomous independent and that are world class uh and if you have these kinds of institutions they will devise programs at the end of the day right what is it like why does Colum- why is columbia or, or, or uc berkeley mm. why are they such storied names in journalism the reason they are is because their products mm. the people who graduate from them uh, are very well qualified people in india why is it that the acj batch mm. is snapped up by uh, by news i mean of course the hindu has uh, cherry picks uh, but mm-hmm. everybody grabs these guys yeah. right is because the, the it's not because of any regulate you know regulatory intervention or government involvement but because uh, in a mark in the marketplace they've come up with the best sort of curriculum mm. and uh, their products are genuinely talented and good mm. and they get good training right so i think that uh, we uh, seem to be you know confusing you see journalism it is a profession mm. 
but it's not a profession or a trade in the way that law or medicine or engineering is right, right? where where you would want to have some set some kind of a uh, a benchmark uh, so you have a, you know you have the bar council or you have medical council or mm. this kind of professional exams journalism is not that kind of thing it was it never was i would say especially now when you have social media where yeah. everybody anybody with a computer and a, and, a, and a brain and an internet connection can set himself or herself up as a journalist mm. right? so so the very idea of uh, uh, pushing regulation or pushing some kind of official standard of pedagogy mm. when this is the terrain that you're dealing with mm. Uh, really doesn't make any sense. All right, and then I'll give you the final word because uh, I mean you've heard both the points of view as far as the concerns are over there about it's such a move. So if you would see, like I've actually been concern. exposed to all the three sides. Even while, like, just as uh, Siddharth has had an ex experience with the United States, even I've had it with the Missouri School of Journalism, mm -hmm. which is the oldest journalism school in the world. And you know, these are debates that are not, I think, unique to India. These mm -hmm. debates are globally there too. Questions like in an age where the mobile phone and you see what's called a citizen journalist, you actually can become, contribute not only through the social media on frontline media also with just a single shot mm -hmm. and something which may not be written in as you would traditionally see it written in terms of journalism. So that's part of the evolution. Mm -hmm. The second part is in terms of verification of facts. There was something that at a time was almost certain. I probably, Vinod Bhai and Siddharth may have a view on it, that you wouldn't do a story without a pre-publication verification. Mm -hmm. and that's increasingly becoming rare. There's no kind of verification. And in that haste, so even newspapers sometimes, although the uh, newspapers are far more conservative given the nature of the media, mm -hmm. And uh, there is perhaps a renewed interest in newspapers by, by even readers yeah. because, you know, they feel that, yes, now a more measured mm. response is coming because it's mm. not instant like television. So there are various aspects. The third is about asking questions. Of course, I like to how uh, Vinod Bhai put it, a cacophony, not a chorus. Mm. I think that also puts it out very well in terms of the nature of journalism. Mm. But yes, I mean, asking questions, that would happen. Sometimes those questions themselves may be incredulous to those who may be answering questions. Like just to pick up the poor bandha thing, I'll give a counter. If someone blows themselves up, you can't really be saying mm. that, you know, what was exactly the motive of the blow up because it took place. So this reverse cacophony also would take place. That's the nature of engagement. It's not an engagement that is about an embrace. Mm. It's an engagement of actually the class. And finally, who decides? It's only finally the viewer or the reader who will decide. That is where the strength comes. It's all for the public good in the public domain. So I would say we should be open-minded. Let's see what comes. If industry is able to set those standards, that's the ideal situation and that's how it should be. The government can only play a limited role from the educational perspective and certainly if you set minimum standards, perhaps some of the young people who get duped into buying you know, pieces of paper that really don't qualify them to with any skill set, they may be saved. And that might be the limited purpose that may come out of this. No, one last point I want to make, hmm. that indeed we have miserably failed and a section of the media has miserably failed in handling real-time information. See, that is where we mostly go wrong. Hmm. Newspapers have done relatively better because we have a certain degree of time lag where we can cross-check, double-check, you know. And of course, competitive journalism. Hmm. Competitive journalism is not a great idea. Yeah. You see, uh, the Economist doesn't compete with anyone, but it is one of the best produced magazine. And we look forward to what they have to say. So I think a certain evolution of culture in this mm. profession is required. And that culture can only be created by people who are equipped, both in terms of a sense of inquiry, both in terms of learning, mm. and from where they are coming from. That is going to do a lot of good not declaring Indian Institute of Mass Communication, I mean no, respect, no, no disrespect to them as a national institution. I don't think Indian Institute of Mass Communication is yet ready to be qualified as a national institution. Of excellence. Yes. All right, so we'll leave it over there, gentlemen, because we'll have to wait for the details of uh, this of communication course. university, the proposed communication university to come out and really understand uh, w whether there would be any checks and balances as far as quality of education of uh, journalism is concerned. And we'll be discussing this topic, revisiting this topic once those details are out. But for now, we'll leave it over here. Thanks so much, all of you, for coming in and sharing your views with us. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.